If you're looking to learn how to lube your mechanical switches, you have come to the right place. Now this is going to be a longer content piece than is typical. It's designed to be something that you can follow along with at home if this is the first time you've done this. However, if you're looking for some advice or tips on a particular area of switch lubing that you're having a hard time with, there are chapters set up and timestamps down in the video's description so you can jump straight to the content that's relevant to you. And if you want to see more videos like this, Make sure you toss us a thumbs up on the way out, get subscribed and notified, and make sure you're following me on Twitter so you don't miss any of our content when it goes live. So, everything we got on the table right here is the basics you'll need to lube a mechanical switch. Now, at a minimum, you need, of course, the lube you're gonna be using as well as a brush to apply it, a set of tweezers to hold some of the more delicate parts, a switch opener, and a jewelry claw, or as it's known in this hobby, a stem claw. I also like to keep a cap off to the side that I can use to do sound checks on small batches of switches as and when I complete them. Now, optionally, you will also want to have something here to keep all of your switch components in uh, some sort of state of organization, since presumably you'll be doing more than one switch at a time. That will come in the form of a lube station. This is a really basic small model that I got off of Amazon as part of a bundle kit. I'll have this linked down in the video's description along with everything else from this video. This will hold about 33 switches worth of components and it, it gets the job done for small batches at a time. If you'd like to have more switches organized at one time, there are larger models like this one that you get from Space Cables. They also have this in green acrylic. This holds 63 switches, uh, including the stems. There is no space for uh, your lube or your springs or anything like that, but it'll keep most of the parts uh, reasonably well organized. You can also get really massive lube stations at Prevail Key Company. Or if you want something that's just a little bit easier to conceal after the fact, you can also use these little serving bowls. Uh, again, you pick these up on Amazon in like 10 packs or something like that for really dirt cheap. And it's a really just simple way to keep all of your parts organized. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is obviously open up the switch. We can't lube it when it's fully assembled like this. Pay attention to the switch opener you're using and the design of the outside of the switch. This particular switch opener comes with two different halves to it, and each of them is designed for two different housing styles. One for a more traditional MX style housing with four prongs on the top housing to clip it to the bottom, and the kale box style housing, which has two broader pegs for the top housing to hoop onto four smaller pegs on the bottom housing. These are not interchangeable with one another, so you will need to make sure you have one or the other depending on the style of housing your switch uses. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna be sticking with this Gateron Red switch right here since it's one that most of you are likely to be familiar with. What you wanna do is line up these clear pegs on the outside of the housing with the four smaller pegs that are on the surface of the switch opener right here. And then all you're gonna wanna do is press down in the center of the switch, and that will allow you to separate all of your components, just like so. There we go, we have a disassembled switch. Now for those of you following along at home, depending on the switch you're following along with, there may have been some factory lube on it. It's up to you whether or not you want to wipe that off. I personally recommend you do because even though you can brush over it with your lube of choice, you run into a higher possibility of creating a sluggish switch when you do that. So uh, if you do find you need to clean off your switches, uh, some warm water and Dawn dish soap with, uh, with a mildly abrasive toothbrush over the components. It'd be a really good place to start to get all the lube cleaned off and then just go over it with some Q-tips to dry it off afterwards. A small sonic cleaner is also a good option for helping to get these components cleaned faster and in batches, but understandably, that's not something everyone's just going to have on hand and is an added cost that for most enthusiasts probably isn't worth it. All right. At this point, I like to apply my switch films because if you try applying them after everything's already been lubed and close to being reassembled, there's a lot of parts that get in the way. We're using KBD fan switch films that come on little sheets like these with little uh, plastic covers over the top of them. Basically what you wanna do is take your tweezers and gently lift up on the corner of one of the films, grip it, and on the film, there is a sep 
On the film, there's a separate layer that you can sort of see in the top right here. Let me see if I can get the light to, to hit this so you can see it. There we go. So see this thin layer at the top right here? That needs to be lined up with the light diffusion layer on the bottom housing. And it's, it's odd, uh, coincidentally, going to match the shape of the switch film. So you set it over top like that, making sure that the film itself, focus for me, and you want to make sure that the film itself isn't sitting inside the switch anywhere because if the top housing clamps down on the film, odds are it's going to break it and you're going to need to start again with a different film. It's not the end of the world. Most, fil most film packs will have enough extra films that you can you know, mess up every now and then, but you want to try and minimize that happening. So just make sure everything's lined up correctly on your bottom housing. You'll also notice that the switch film should sit in with all of the manufacturing grooves that are inside the, uh, the switch housing. So that'll help you guide it into place a little bit easier. Now, the next thing we'll do is the spring. So you're going to grab the spring with your tweezers, preferably somewhere in the middle. That way you have unfettered access to, uh, to the top and bottom of the spring, because that's really the most important thing for us to lube. All right. So we've got our spring. We take our lube brush and you can use the same exact lube you're using for your switch, be it 205 grade zero, Tribosys 3204, something like that. You wanna get enough lube on your brush. Focus, please. You wanna get a really small blob of lube on the end of your brush, about the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen. And you just take your brush and wiggle it around on the inside of both sides of the spring. You want to get that lube distributed as evenly as possible. This is where 95%, I would say, of your spring ping comes from, is friction on the ends of the spring as it's being compressed and then released when you press down on the switch. Now, any residual lube that's left on your brush at this point, just run it through uh, the coils of the spring just to get a little bit more on the rest of it, and that'll eliminate basically the vast majority of your spring ping on your switch. Now, there will be some switches where the springs are just kind of obnoxious with ping and you can't fully get rid of it. If you have plate foam in your keyboard, that will actually dull out most of the rest of your spring ping at that point. And then when you're done, you just drop the spring onto the spring perch on the bottom housing and that part's done. All right, so we're finally getting to the point that we can start lubing the rest of the parts. I personally only lube the stem on my switches. There's not really much of a discernible difference that I personally get lubing both the stem and the housing. So to start with, we are once again using just the tiniest blob of lube on the tip of the brush. Again, shoot for something that's about the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen. Hell, if you want to have a ballpoint pen sat next to you when you do this, go ahead and do that so you have that visual frame of reference. This does not take much lube at all. And we're going to start by making little dabs on either side of the slide rail for the stem. The rest of the lube that's on the brush is gonna get used to brush over the broad faces of the stem. Once you've brushed all that over, return to those blobs that are on the slide rail right here and start evenly distributing that lube into all the little nooks and crannies on the outside surface here. All right, now that we've distributed all of that, your stem should look like it's maybe glistening, if anything. You should still be able to effectively make out all of the surface textures of the plastics you're working with. So if there were any manufacturing lines or whatever in the surface of the plastic, those should still be noticeable. At this point, if you notice that there's excessive clumping of any lube anywhere on the stem, go ahead and wipe off your brush and then rebrush over that area until it gets thin enough that the plastic returns to a state of looking like it's maybe sweating a little bit at most. Again, a little goes a long way and it's easier for you to under apply lube and apply more than it is for you to over apply and take it off. 
Now, if everything looks good, use whatever lube is left on the brush and go over the pole of the stem at the bottom. We actually don't want a ton of lube on the pole down here because it's going to be inserting into the spring perch for the bottom housing. If you get too much lube here, you'll get what's known as stem farts. And while they do sound funny, they don't feel very good at all. It's basically trapped air working its way uh, in between the spaces between this plastic for the stem and for the bottom housing and moving lube around and it just feels kind of sluggish chonky and bad. Now at this point we've lubed everything except for the legs. This is where I want to make some specific notes for you. If you're using a linear switch, you probably won't need to use as much lube on the legs to get them feeling properly smooth unless there's some sort of manufacturing tolerance issue either with the stem you're using or the leaf spring inside the bottom housing. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do about a leaf spring having a coarse surface on it. Lube the switch to the best of your ability. There may still be some coarseness there. If it's something to do with the stem, that may actually break in over time since palm plastics are designed to be sort of self-lubricating, if you will. But at this point, if you're not satisfied with the amount of lube you have left on your brush and you're using a linear switch for this lubing tutorial, Tutorial. Go ahead and pick up a little bit more lube from your uh, from your container. Uh, again, we're, we're shooting for nothing more than the tip of a ballpoint pen, but since we're only going to be lubing the face of the legs here, try and shoot for a bit less than that. And just make sure that the legs have a nice even coating of lube on them. Again, we don't need a ton here because if we put too much on the legs, this can also create a sluggish switch as the tension of the leaf spring pushes down on these legs and just makes it more difficult for the switch to move up and down. But if you're doing this with a tactile switch, you're gonna wanna be very careful with how you apply lube to the stem legs because while it will make the switch smoother, it will also dull your tactility. This is where some of the other thinner lubes on the market come into play and can be really impactful in retaining that tactility that you paid for with your switch, but still getting it feeling nice and smooth. Lubes like Tribosys 3204, Tribosys 3203, and hell, even GPL 105 and 106 oil are great options for use on tactile switch legs when you don't want to lose tactility, but want to get it feeling smoother. All right, so at that point, we can then put the stem back on top of the spring, like so. Then we take our top housing. Now, you want to make sure that the part of the top housing that has this more pronounced bump on it rests over the leaf spring for your switch, because technically, you can force this on the opposite direction and you're gonna have a bad time, either potentially damaging a part of the switch, rendering it unusable, or at the very least creating a sort of pain in the butt situation for you. So again, make sure the more pronounced hump for the top housing back here is sitting over the leaf spring assembly and make sure the legs for the stem are also facing the leaf spring. Set that back on top, clip it, clip everything into place, we have a lubed and filmed Gateron Red. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Again, toss us a thumbs up on the way out if you liked what you saw. Make sure you subscribe and notified and following us on Twitter so you don't miss any of our content when it goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.